lymphatic system. I would like to tell you about lymphatic vessels first. These lymphatic vessels, they are a complex network of lymphatic capillaries. And they are a complex network of lymphatic capillary. These are lymphatic capillaries and they they converge they converge to form large lymphatic vessels they converge to form large lymphatic vessels Now these lymphatic vessels, they drain they drain into large veins. They drain into large veins. These lymphatic vessels they drain in large veins. <clears throat> These lymphatic capillaries, they collect fluid they collect fluid that drains from capillary beds these lymphatic capillaries they collect the fluid this is the fluid that drains from the capillary beds this is the fluid and this is the capillary beds these are the capillary beds and they collect the fluid that drains from these capillary beds and this fluid is a result of exchange of nutrients that happens in the capillaries and the waste that is collected in the capillaries from the tissues all this generates a fluid and this fluid is drained out in these lymphatic capillaries these lymphatic capillaries they further converge to form lymphatic vessels and the lymphatic vessels they further converge and they drain into the venous side of the vascular system and they drain at the root of neck they drain all the lymphatic fluid of the body is drained out in the root of neck right here also this fluid contains hormones this fluid contains hormones and pathogens it contains hormones and pathogens the lymphatic system is also a major transporter of fat it's a major transporter of fat now how does it do that we all know of there is an organ in the body that is called small intestine this is a rough diagram of small intestine now the epithelium 
of this organ. The epithelium of this organ, it processes and absorbs large amounts of fat. This is the epithelium. This is small intestine. And this is the intestinal epithelium. The intestinal epithelium. Now this epithelium, it processes and absorbs fat. So it's processing some fats. Just imagine that these are fat molecules and these fat molecules are coated by protein and these are called protein coated lipid droplets lipid droplets these protein coated lipid droplets are known as chylomicrons chylomicrons now these chylomicrons they drain in lymphatic capillaries they drain in lymphatic capillaries and the lymphatic capillaries of the small intestine are known as lacteals. They're called lacteals. These are the lymphatic capillaries of the small intestine. Now the fluid, it drains into these capillaries and is transferred to the venous system and it is transferred to the venous system. It is transferred to the venous system of the body and the root of the neck. This is how major fat of the body is transferred through the lymphatic system and that is why we call it as the major transporter of fat. The fluid in the lymphatic capillaries is crystal clear but the fluid that is collected in lacteals fluid collected in the lacteals is it is milky and opaque it is milky or opaque the reason it is milky or opaque is because the presence of chylomicrons chylomicrons are fat droplets they're lipid droplets and that is the reason the lacteals the fluid in the lacteals appears milky now lymphatic vessels are present in every region of the body but there are a few exceptions what are those exceptions the area in the body where lymphatic vessels are absent are the bone marrow bone marrow and brain we don't have lymphatic vessels or in the brain we don't have them in bone marrow also we don't have them in avascular tissues such as cartilage so these are three exceptions where lymphatics are absent lymphatics are absent in these structures now how does this fluid travel in the body this fluid it travels in the body through contraction of skeletal muscles and skeletal muscles they contract the fluid is pushed forward and it moves it circulates around the body also pulses in the arteries the pulse generated in the arteries also pushes the lymph 
forward in the body and there is a unidirectional flow that is maintained by the presence of valves. Certain structures can be found in the lymphatic vessels and that structure is called lymph node. So what is a lymph node? A lymph node is a very small encapsulated structure and it is about 0.1 2.5 centimeters in size. This is the size of a lymph node and they interrupt the lymphatic vessels. These are capillaries, lymphatic capillaries. These lymphatic capillaries converge to form lymphatic vessels and these lymphatic vessels are interrupted by this structure, a small structure that is known as a lymph node. The lymph nodes contain further more structures that are called macrophages and lymphocytes. So further into a lymph node we can find certain structures that are called lymphatocytes and macrophages. Now, they act as body's defense system. They act as the body's defense system. They act as filters. They trap the phagocytose material, phagocytose material that can be found in the lymph. They trap it up. They also defend against antigens. They defend against antigens. Certain cells that metastasize from primary tumors to the secondary tumors cells. This is a very important note. Cells that metastasize or they move on or they upgrade from primary tumor to secondary tumor they do this in the lymph nodes so primary tumors that enter the lymphatic vessels they get upgraded to secondary tumors and when this happens in certain nodes they show some physical characteristics some physical characteristics they become hard or tender. That's how we detect a secondary tumor in the nodes. There are certain regions in the body that are filled with abundance of lymph nodes. So starting on from the top, we have precranial rings. We have precranial rings. This one, it's called Three cranial rings. These are lymph nodes that are present at the base of the skull. Base of skull. We have abundance of lymph nodes and are known as precranial rings. And further moving inferiorly, we have cervical nodes. We have abundance of lymph nodes in the cervical region and are known as cervical lymph nodes. They are formed, they're found along the passage of internal jugular vein, internal jugular vein.
Then further we move on to the tracheal nodes. We have tracheal nodes and they can be found near the trachea, the tracheal nodes. Then we have axillary nodes. These are axillary nodes, axillary nodes and can be found in the axilla. We have, we further have deep nodes. These are deep nodes. So deep nodes are associated with the regions of the celiac trunk and inferior and superior mesenteric arteries that we'll discuss in the later videos. Then we have inguinal nodes, inguinal nodes, inguinal nodes and these nodes are found along the path of the inguinal ligament and the final we have femoral nodes femoral nodes these nodes these lymph nodes are found along the passage of the femoral vein lymphatic trunks and ducts now all lymph vessels in the body they coalesce or they converge they come together to form large trunks and those trunks they drain into the venous system this is just a short diagram of the venous system and those lymph vessels those lymph trunks they drain at the meeting point of the internal jugular vein internal jugular vein and this is the subclavian these lymph trunks they drain at the meeting point of internal jugular and subclavian vein where they form the brachiocephalic vein brachiocephalic vein so this is the point where these lymph vessels they drain into the venous system at the meeting point of internal jugular and subclavian vein where they form the brachiocephalic vein lymph that is collected from right side of the head right side of the neck the upper limbs and the superior surface of the abdominal wall they drain with in the lymph vessels that connect with the right side of the neck whereas all the other regions of the body they their lymph is drained in the vessels that are connected to the left side of the body. 